Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. We begin today's exploration of Chernobyl's reactor or nuclear power plant in the cities of Pripyat and Chernobyl from UKBB, Kiev Borispil. At an elevation of 427 feet, it's approximately 50 nautical miles from the actual power plant itself. It's the largest and busiest airport in the Ukraine and provides 62% of Ukrainian passenger air traffic, handling 12.6 million passengers as of 2018. In the same year, Kiev was recognized by flight stats as a top 20 most punctual European airport. Over 60 national airlines and foreign airlines operate 120 worldwide routes. It's serviced by two runways, 18 left and right and 36 left and right, with a 13,123 and 11,483 foot runway. It is the only Ukrainian airport with scheduled transcontinental flights. We will track the Bravo Romeo Papa VOR 115.9 at an initial 328 radial. Uh, once I was on site, you'll actually see I adjusted it to about a 325, so somewhere between 328 and 325 from the BRP VOR will get you there. But we're going to visually follow the Dnepr River North. We will begin a right-hand turn as we depart runway 18 right out of the airfield. And you can see by our moving map display, we've reversed our course and we're heading north. The river will be off to our left and we'll fly that up and then uh, until we intercept our radial, then we'll head directly to the power plant itself. You can see also on the moving map display, the magenta line I have plotted is a direct course for our destination today which is UKKM, Kiev Antonov 2 International Airport. I thought while we were flying and exploring the area that it might be interesting to land at two different airports just so we can see what is in the area. For this flight we're using the TBM 900 or 940 that's available in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As we fly out, I have navigated across some points of interest, did a little research, overlaid some Google Maps with you. You'll see as we near those points of interest. And uh, just a couple, when this reactor failed, uh, it was the Soviet Union at the time here in Ukraine. And uh, I just found that it would be kind of interesting to see some other things that were around here. So uh, here to the left, uh, there's two consonants there with Dnepr. It's a... Uh, DN. I don't know really how they pronounce that in Ukrainian or, um, or Russian. I believe the Ukrainian is the local language. But we'll fly up the river kind of north a little bit here and then we'll intercept that track. We're actually on the 325 now as you can see or we're heading a, a 325 heading. If we zoom out on the map, here we have the main uh, basin or a river, uh, lake if you will. We'll continue following this at a north-northwest heading and you'll rejoin me a little further up as we get closer to the uh, nuclear power plant. Here we are a beam, one of the widest portions of the river. It makes a great navigation aid. Of course it pops up also on the moving map display. So you can actually fly the north-northwest fly over this as you see here on the uh, on the Garmin. This is a wide point here and then the, ro uh, the river actually narrows and I believe it joins the Pripyat River which runs out and up to it. Here we we're feet dry on the uh, western side and we'll continue up here for uh, a little further. This is probably about 10 minutes into the flight in real time. If we zoom in here on our Garmin, 
you can take a look and there's actually a uh, restricted airspace area here and this is our power plant functionally where it widens there that is functionally where we're going to go i don't know if this is all the exclusion zone i would imagine we're actually in that now uh, i think the i think it extends some 30 kilometers around the power plant i could be slightly wrong with that but as we uh, will continue to head up there, that restricted area makes a great visual uh, reference here on the Garmin. Do a slight course adjustment here uh, as we continue to head up this way. We are beginning to approach the Duga 1, which I will show you. It's on the right side of the screen now. Uh, the texture is not great at my settings but I've overlaid the Google map image here, and it was one of three Soviet over-the-horizon radar stations developed in the 50s. Chernobyl 2 was a nearby military housing area for military personnel supporting the radar. The Duga 1 array seen here is a receiving station with the transmitter called Ubek 1 near the town of Chernichev, or sorry, Chernihev. The Duga was nicknamed by amateur radio operators as the Russian woodpecker due to a repetitive tapping sound heard on shortwave radios. The site was evacuated the day after the Chernobyl power plant disaster. The transmitter in Lubeck was torn down in the year 2000. This station also functioned in U.S. parlance as what we would call the Dew Line uh, Defense Early Warning System. So it was set up to detect uh, ballistic missile launches and uh, things that were beyond the uh, visual range and over the horizon. Here you can see the power plant really off of our uh, right wing tip here as we cross over some of the, uh, the housing areas. And coming up, it'll be the urban recreation area. This includes the famous amusement park that was supposed to open in the days following the disaster. Though not an endorsement, if you have an interest in learning more, I suggest watching a couple documentaries on Amazon Prime called uh, Chernobyl's Cafe and Chernobyl 30 Years On. It provides a really uh, cool kind of in-depth documentary style uh, approach to some of the areas here. And again, we have the overlaid map you can see to the right side of your screen. And then we're looking at the Google map over top. We'll make a left-hand turn and come back over it and uh, discuss a few more points of interest. The town we're actually over is Pripyat, and Chernobyl was directly off our nose, some uh, probably 20 kilometers. In front of us is the Yanov backwater. I believe this was a recreational lake for boating and fishing, and there's many photos on the internet of this famous sinking boat, and that boat is in this lake, left to rot and sink as the years pass. And to our right again is the urban living area. The power plant is actually at about our uh, about 11 o'clock here as we're flying directly over it. The, uh, the overhead view, you'll see the, the arch being built. The concrete structure around the reactor floor was the sarcophagus. And then the, the, the archway that was rolled in, I believe around 2017, 2018, it was placed over the reactor. It was supposed to give another 100 years of... Uh, maintenance while they work to still decontaminate the area. The power plant itself, I, if I memory serves me correctly, the last reactor was shut down uh, in 1998 and 2000. So two of them continued to operate even after the uh, 1986 incident on April 25th. Here we have again the Google map overlay and the silver archway is the new safe confinement that was rolled over the demolished or exploded reactor uh, during the disaster. And again that was to contain, I, I believe the sarcophagus was uh, kind of hastily constructed and it had some radiation leaks so that's why they did that. We have the cooling pond off to the left. Here again is the overhead view from Google Maps. And that was the emergency uh, backflow in case they needed uh, in case they needed the extra water in the event of something happening. The maximum depth was 20 meters 
And according to some of the websites listed below, if you're interested in learning more, please check our links below. Um, there were some fishermen actually on the pond the night of the 26th, and some even became casualties of radiation sickness. I'm not sure the significance of that traffic circle and road, but it was here in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, so it kind of drew my attention to it, and I thought that was kind of just a, a neat roadway traffic circle uh, issue. Here, we, uh, um, here we're actually approaching the uh, town of Chernobyl, and there's a few things that are famous around this area. Here, uh, just off to our left, is where the uh, monument of those who saved the world is, where the arrow is, you can see there, as well as the Chernobyl welcome sign. A lot of these images pop up on the internet and uh, movies, documentaries, etc. about it. So I just thought those were pretty neat points of interest. That's where they're located. And I think at this point we're nearing the end of the exclusion zone. So people would normally continue to you know, live normal lives. They weren't evacuated from this area. Now here I was adjusting the, uh, the VOR here to try and get a more finite uh, fix off of the uh, BRP VOR. At this point we're now leaving the site. We're heading south toward our destination. Here a little further we'll actually, uh, I'll show an overlay here. I'm not sure what these buildings are so if you know please comment below. Uh, it's the, the town of Raikun. R-Y-K-U-N, and I believe that's in the Kiev Oblast. It's about 10 miles north of our destination. Uh, the buildings right here that you can see kind of drew my interest. I thought they kind of looked like farm fields or, you know, places where you would keep animals or something. So I couldn't really find anything by searching it. So if you know, please leave a comment below. It'd be kind of cool, but it makes a nice landmark here. You can see the, uh, the airport that we're landing at, our destination, Kiev Antonov 2, U-K-K-M, off of our nose. Here again is the Google overhead view of the area we've just crossed over. And you'll join me on a base turn to short final. I kind of sped up this approach here. Uh, originally, the Antonov 2 International Airport is a, uh, was a top secret in-house flight testing and improvement base for Antonov aircraft. It continues as a testing facility and an international cargo airport. The airport is owned by Antonov and operated by Antonov Airways, and the world's largest aircraft and only existing copy, the Antonov AN-225, is based here. This runway is uh, runway 15 and 33. You can see here we're approaching 33, and it is 3,500 meters or 11,483 feet in length. Thank you for joining us on today's flight where we flew from Kiev to Pripyat, Chernobyl, and now Hostomel. If you like this content, please like us and subscribe. On social media, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and now Reddit at FlightFT2019. On Facebook, we are Flight Brothers FT. If you like more content like this, I have a couple ideas still in the works. Here we're going to show you an overhead shot of, uh, it was actually down in the bottom right, a Antonov AN-124, so take a look at that. Again, that image is courtesy of Google. So, as we always say on this channel, plan the flight and fly the plan. If you enjoy this content, consider buying us a coffee to show your support. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com slash flightbrosft or search for us from the menu if you'd like to contribute. A link will be provided in the video description below.